Today, I turned Minecraft into a horror game with Hero Brian. Um, I also added way too many mods to add to the spook factor. Will I be able to survive or will I die trying? But to understand what I've been through, we need to start that day one. When I spawned in, I knew that this wouldn't be easy. So I tried to get as much gear as fast as possible. And it's a wood started just smiling straight down. And to manage to get through this terrifying world, I came up with a five step plan to help me along the way. Hopefully. And the first step is to get some iron. And luckily for me, I spotted a mountain just up ahead where I can easily gear up. And after mining enough iron to make me a full set of armor, the sun starts set. Then it's gonna become a night in a minute now, so I need to run. And after running through the night looking for a village, I got my first experience of what this world had to offer. Oh, oh. What the f I should just see boots! And out of the darkness came a new entity. Oh, no! But since I was in dire need of resources, I ran to the shore trying to escape through the ocean. And so I crafted a boat to make sure I got away. I don't hope it can swim. <laughs> and when I got to the other side, I felt safe. At least for now. And as I searched around the area, I found two villages. And after my visit, they mysteriously lost some beds, their hay bales, emeralds, and their big iron friend. And the next thing on the list was to get some diamonds. So I headed down into the cave. And right after making a little camp, I was ready to go down into the mines. And I soon realized that I wasn't alone. Oh, so Sound. And after going further into the cave, I realized where the noise was coming from. Oh, probably nothing. Oh! 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 Well, that didn't work. Anyway, I grabbed my gear and headed deeper into the cave. I'm gonna kill that one day, but today is not the day. And moments later, I stumbled across a huge cave. Whoa! And this was the perfect place to look for some diamonds. But there was only a slight problem. Yeah, I'm really not good at this. And the second I got back, I found four diamonds. But one of them wanted to go for a swim. No! I should have closed the water stream. And after collecting the three diamonds, the first step was finally completed. And so it felt natural to start on the second step. That is, to be the home. But to do that, I needed to head out of the cave. But yet again, something else got in the way. You escape this time. What the... Wait, what is that? <laughs> Well, at this point, I'm starting to get used to it. And after grabbing my stuff, I wasted no time getting out of the cave. And as soon as I got back to my camp, I immediately went looking for a perfect place to live. And it wouldn't take long before I found the right location. I found a village. Yes, I found a village. Let's go. And after looking around the place, I realized that the village had a blacksmith. And in the blacksmith, I found some food and six diamonds. Oh, okay. And after looting the chest, I decided to start working on my new house. And after building my interior, I got my first experience with Herobrine. Ooh! And it didn't stop there, because right after he tried to sneak up on me. <laughs> and as I completed my house, at least half of it, I decided to take a break from building and start on the third step. Building a shrine. And to do this, I needed to gather two blocks of netherrack, a pair of gold blocks, and some flint and steel. And to get the netherrack, I needed to head to the nether. And so I went down into a nearby cave to look for some lava. But on the way down, a huge group of mobs appeared from the shadows. Okay, so this usually wouldn't be a problem, but since my shield was very low in durability, a single hit from anything would break it. And break it did. But the only problem was that I didn't know that the shield broke. And with that in mind, the next thing I did was head deeper into the cave. And after going further down, I heard some strange noises coming from the distance. Oh no. And as I saw the weeping angels, I tried yet again to run away. But this time, things didn't go as planned. Whew. Stop it. Where's my shield? Run! Take this a pickaxe. Okay, so it turns out that if the weeping angel hits you, you will get teleported to a random place in a random dimension. And luckily for me, I ended up right next to my village. And right after I got back to my home, I headed yet again down into the mines. And this time around, I finally found what I came here for. Lava. And after jumping down, I used my professional micro skills to make the portal. And when the portal was finished, I went through, revealing a basalt delta biome. And after looking around for a bit, I came across the netherrack I needed. But since I was too focused on gathering the blocks, I had no idea that something was rapidly approaching me. Oh, oh, no, no! Oh, 
Well, I got yet again teleported away, but this time around I ended up in the middle of nowhere. And after running aimlessly around, I finally got to a place that looked familiar. And after I crafted another boat, I headed yet again overseas. And from here I thought I would easily get home. But I actually got lost. Again. And I spent well over an hour going from biome to biome to an outpost. And after quickly looting the structure, I somehow managed to find my way back to the base. And when I finally got home, I realized that I still needed some gold to complete the shrine. So I decided to go back to the nether. And there's two main ways to get gold in this dimension. Either by mining it all by hand or looting one of the dangerous bastions. But the second I started mining, I managed to get distracted by a blaze spawner. And the worst part is, I didn't even need blaze rods. So after grinding for the totally wrong material, I headed back to the portal. But just like always, something wouldn't let that happen. Oh! Stop it, Tim Brian. Okay, stop. Did anyone else see that? I don't know about you, but I think danger moved while I was looking at it. And I'm pretty sure that's the one thing they're not supposed to do. And so, after I got teleported for the third time in a row, I managed to get yet again back to my base. But since I didn't get any gold from Nether, I decided to go down and try mining for it in the cave instead. But after I got down, it wouldn't take long until I get greeted by an old friend. And the second I saw him, I knew that I would beat him this time, because I had lava. No! Okay, so maybe the lava didn't work. And the second I got back to my stuff that was way too close to the lava, I started gathering the gold I needed. But you might be wondering, why am I going through all this effort just to build the shrine? To put it simply, building the shrine summons Herobrine and permanently removes him from your game. So it can avoid settings like this. And after getting just enough gold for the shrine, I headed back up to the surface, ready to face Herobrine one last time. Oh. Oh. Well, that was easy. And after finally removing Hiberbrine from my world, I decided to continue working on my house. Cause at the moment, it's not the greatest. So after I got the resources I needed, I could finally build a high needed roof for my home. And with the roof completed, I still felt like something was missing. So to fix that, I added a second floor. And when the floor was done, I could finally say that my house was finished. And with that out of the way, I could move on to the next step, getting some diamond gear. But to do that, I need to head back into the cave. And after looking far and wide for some diamonds, this happened. <laughs> well, I was not prepared for that. And after dying yet again to the cave dweller, I knew that this was the time to start the final step, killing the dweller once and for all. But before I could possibly beat him, I needed to get some better gear, cause at the moment my iron armor is cutting it. And so, after completing three different mining trips, I managed to get enough diamonds to make me a chest plate, a helmet, and some boots. And while I was at it, I also equipped some armor trips that I stole from the outpost. And right after getting all the gear I needed, I can finally start on the last step, removing the dweller so he doesn't have a chance to spook me again. And so, I headed down into the cave dweller's lair, and the second I got down, I heard it spawn in the distance. But since I already died too many times, I knew that this was my chance to kill it. Yeah, I am, I know. Well, apparently I was not prepared for that. Again! And as I went down to collect my stuff, I started thinking. Every time I died to the cave dweller, I felt unprepared in some other way. And it always ended up with him creeping up on me and killing me in just a couple of hits. And this thought really made me wonder if this challenge was even possible in the first place. I got really demotivated after this and I was about to give up. But before giving up, I looked back at everything I've accomplished. I built a cozy home, beat Herobrine, and every time I got teleported away, I always managed to find my way back home. And so giving up now will make all this effort pointless. And filled with nothing but determination, I decided to head back down into the cave, ready to face the cave dweller one last time. I feel like I said that before. Oh, here you are.
<laughs> Thank you, skeleton. <laughs> And with the cave dweller defeated, I can finally leave this cave once and for all. And by leave, I mean teleport away as far as utterly possible. Aw, <laughs> oh, shit.